So on this episode of NXT with a total of 5 matches, we get a Jabber Squash match, we get a Blink and Miss It match, you get a NXT Women's Championship match that the fans just butchered, and we get a questionable booking tag team match decision and a lackluster main event. Come on, NXT. You could do a lot better than that, I've seen better episodes. So we kick up the show with the Ascension in a Jobber Squash match facing two Jobbers once again. NXT, please do me a favor. Stop doing this. It doesn't help the Ascension's career at all. If you want to help their career, have them face better teams than the Ascension. I mean, you've done it at NXT Arrival with Too Cool. Why can't you do more of that? If you want to have an, uh, the Ascension to get better as a team, you face teams that were legit tag teams from the past. Bring them back. Keep doing this instead of having them facing two unknown local guys. That's all I ask. And then we get into a match between Tyler Breeze and Mojo Rally. And this wasn't even a match. This was an absolute... I don't know what the heck it was. Here you have Tyler Breeze go over Mojo Rally in what, five or six seconds? Mojo Rally doesn't get any offense? I don't understand what the logic behind this match taking place was at all. This was stupid NXT. I mean, it's questionable to have put Mojo Rally in this situation with Tyler Breeze. I get you want to establish Tyler Breeze as the number one contender, but using Mojo Rally to do it? Come on, NXT. You could do a lot better because here's a guy in Mojo Rally who has been steaming, rolling through every single guy you put in front of him, and he can't be Tyler Breeze? That makes no sense. And then we get into the match between Charlotte versus Summer Rae for the NXT Women's Championship. And going into this match, I'm thinking, you know, because NXT made such a big deal out of it based on uh, the video packages that they showed at the beginning of the show before the intro, I was expecting this to main event the show because of its significance and its importance. But looking back at it now, I'm kind of glad that they didn't because of how the fans reacted you know they were chanting boring boring and they were doing the wave so if this match would have ended the show then the fans probably would have went home unsatisfied and that's just my opinion there and in terms of this match i thought it was an okay match i like the psychology of it uh uh, Samurai ye ye yelling out to Charlotte, I made you twice, and I like the submission holds throughout this match as well, the half boss and crab, the figure four headlock, so, you know, there were some good technical things happening, but overall, like I said, this match was just okay, it felt like it was starting to drag out a little bit, you know, they probably uh, cut this short a couple of minutes, even though this match actually got some good time, I just felt like that, you know, there was a bit too much bullshit going on in the ring. You know, let's just get to the point, let's just get to the finish, and then there you have it. So overall, this this kind of didn't live up to my expectations. And what I also like to know is where was Sasha Banks throughout all this with Summer Rae and Charlotte? It just seemed like that NXT forgot that she was involved in the storyline here between these two women. The whole BFF angle where she either goes off with Summer or she goes off with Charlotte or she goes off on her own. And that would have been fine with me if they used her in this match in some way, shape, or form. Instead, what do they do? They do absolutely nothing. And then we get into the question of who is Kaliso's partner going to be to take on the VOD villains based off the backstage simon from last week. And we get that answer and it's none other than Hunico. Uh, I, I mean Sinkara, sorry. Take a deep breath. 
Don't get too excited here, but yeah, this you kind of expected this, you know, to be Sin Cara, two um, lucha libres teaming up to taking on the Va Villains. And overall, this was an okay, very standard tag team match. There was not a lot of tag team maneuvers in the department of wrestling here in this match. I think there was one spot with um, Sin Cara and Kalisto in the in the beginning parts of this match. So overall, this was an okay match. The one thing I did mention, the one thing I will mention, is that uh, usually uh, Lucha Libre high flyers are known for their aerial moveset. And I thought it was really cool when I saw Sin Cara lift up uh, Aiden English and then slam him back down. It was something out of a strongman kind of guy. I thought that was really cool. You know, just something noteworthy, you know, that, that actually popped out in this match. That was actually worth something. So there was a redeeming quality in this very standard tag team match with these two tag teams. The one thing I question, though, is why would you have Kalisto and Sin Cara go over the VOD villains here? I, I get the idea of the mystery partner, even though it was an obvious mystery partner, and that team goes over the other team, but to me, when NXT brought up the VOD villains, you know, they have them win matches, you know, they're getting steamed, they're red hot right now, they have a lot of momentum going on, and then they just kill it with this win, even though I don't think it will hurt their loss long term to me that wasn't really the safest way to go to me this would have been a lot better if you had maybe one of the VOD villains get a cheap win and pin Sin Cara use the ropes or tights or what have you and thus protecting Kalisto in the match but by not having him get pinned or submitted or whatever so you, you could have went you know, uh, a couple of different routes in this match instead of having the Va villains actually get a surprising loss here. To me, that was very questionable out of NXT. To and and to me, uh, with the uh, recent hype for this match, you know, there was a little bit of story going on here. This match probably uh, could have been a lot better. Uh, well, not the match, but the show itself could have been a lot better if this match was actually the first match instead of the Ascension taking on two jobbers. And then we get into the main event on NXT, and that was Adrian Neville versus Rusev. And this was pretty much a nothing special match. It was very, very short. Didn't feel like a main event type of match that you would expect to main event on NXT. I'm sorry, but to me, this just fell flat. And I, I'm not talking about what happened after the match. I'm just talking about just this match itself. But I like what they sort of done here with Tyler Breeze inter inter intervening on, on behalf here of Rusev uh, costing, uh, well, not really costing uh, Neville the match, but Neville winning by disqualification. And then... NXT goes into safe mode instead of having Rusev being the one to get the pinfall at least they kind of made him look okay I guess in a sense where he got the last word he super kicks Neville and he applies the accolade on him and you see on the last image Tyler Breeze looking down on Adrian Neville and I was actually okay with that, but to me, they could have done a lot more to hype up and build up this match between Neville and Tyler Breeze. You could have had a promo segment, or you could have had um, Tyler Breeze um, talk on the microphone after his match against Mojo Rally, talk about his um, championship match and his injury. You know, you, you could have done a lot more. I expected a lot more. Uh, from the uh, not only the NXT championship match, but this whole show itself to me This was just another one of those filler type of NXT episodes Where there was not a lot of promo work not a lot of character development not a lot of storyline development It was just match 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 and uh, two or three of those matches only had a little bit of a purpose and you had also other matches that just were filler I have a question for NXT. Can you at least go an episode without having any filler matches? 
I'm just wondering. I'm curious if NXT can actually pull that off. So overall, to me, this was a very poorly executed type of show. I would give it maybe a 3 or 3.5 out of 10. I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, but that's... That's just what I thought about this show. And if you saw this show of NXT, what did you think about it? Comment below, let me know. While you're at it, you can hit that subscribe button down below this video. You can also follow MRB Wrestling on Twitter. And you can like us on Facebook at the Make Rock and Bolt Wrestling Review Show. And on a final note, to all your viewers watching, get plenty of rest. And always do your best.